In today's video, I'm gonna be going over the top five most common mistakes that I see in resumes from computer science students applying to software engineering internships and new grad positions. I recently gave a friend of mine advice on his resume and he went from getting absolutely zero interviews to an internship with Acuna Capital during the big tech layoff hiring freeze. Most of these resume mistakes stem from a fundamental misunderstanding of the relationship that you have with your recruiter and the role that your resume plays in that relationship. The first most common resume mistake that I see is not substantiating your claim. This comes in two main forms, just listing coursework that you've taken and just listing skills or programming languages that you know. As far as the first one is concerned, you took data structures? as a computer science student? No way, that's crazy. I don't know any other computer science student that's taken a data structures course. Every computer science student takes a data structures course, so you don't get brownie points for having done so. Yeah, sure, maybe you took some super fancy machine learning class and you're gonna list that on your resume, but the recruiter, when they're reading your resume, they're gonna assume that it is the kind of minimum possible thing that could justify its existence on your resume. So a recruiter is gonna see machine learning principles, maybe in a relevant coursework list on your resume and they're gonna say oh it could have been a one credit seminar that you didn't even write any code in but you're thinking what no that was a four credit class with a huge final project I poured my heart and soul into it and I wanted to be on my resume and that's fantastic but when you put in the form of a project, link it to a GitHub, talk about the technical challenges and technologies that you used to actually craft that project, that's what a recruiter loves to see because it answers the question, do you know how to code? Do you know how to behave as a software engineer? Big projects are a resounding yes, they do know how to code. Listing off relevant coursework says, absolutely nothing at all. And when it comes to just listing programming languages that you know, oh, you know C and C++, can you talk to me about the difference between memory that exists on the heap versus memory that exists on the stack in C? No, no, you forgot, you took that comp art class three years ago, wrote two small C assignments and don't remember anything from it, then don't list C or C++ on your resume. And besides, it's unlikely that a recruiter would even take that serious because without a associated project or relevant intern experience, then they're going to assume that when you say C, C++, you read two pages of a textbook three years ago. And if you do have relevant experience, then somewhere in the body of the description for your project or internship, it's probably going to say C or C++, and that's satisfactory because they're going to read those languages. The recruiter doesn't need a summary of the programming languages that you use at the end of your resume. They are going to read the projects and in the process come to learn the programming languages that you've used. And if you just list random skills like leadership or Microsoft PowerPoint, then it, good job. It's not tangible and it's not directly applicable to your writing code as a software engineer. And that really is the question that recruiters are trying to answer. Can you be a good software engineer? So just like relevant coursework, unsubstantiated lists of skills are completely irrelevant. And that leads into the second most common resume mistake that I see, which is actually not listing relevant projects or experience. Some students for example, think that if they work on a group project, then they shouldn't put that on their resume because it's not entirely their code, but that's not true. As long as you put it on your resume in a way that highlights the part of the code base that you worked on, then it's still completely fair game. You don't want to get caught in a lie in an interview getting asked questions about code that you didn't write, but if you do part of the code base and somebody starts asking you questions about another part, then you can totally just say in the interview, hey, like, I didn't work on that part of this project, but I did work on this other part. Can I tell you about that? You can play it off. And actually, software engineers appreciate that group experience. Another thing like a data analytics internship, for example, might not be specifically software engineering, but it should still probably go on your resume because it shows that you can work for a company, that you've been through a different HR process, that you've worked with other people, you've had some level of mentorship, you've applied analytical critical thinking skills to business problems. There's a lot of great soft skills that you can generate in non-software engineering internships that should still go on your resume. I've even seen resumes where people had software engineering experience, but it was just at a local tech company or it was for their parents' company or it wasn't the most necessarily substantial role like a Google or Facebook or something along those lines. But I would say you should still list those experiences. And when it does come to the substance of your experience, the second most common mistake that I see is listing completely irrelevant experience on your resume. Oh, did you landscape in high school or you worked at a restaurant? Then that's great, good for you, 
it's not software engineering related. Recruiters are super busy. They look at hundreds, if not thousands of resumes, and they're actively trying to source the best candidates to put into the interview pipeline. When a software engineer goes to interview a candidate, and that candidate had no business being there in the first place and flunks the interview, that's a waste of the candidate's time, the software engineer's time, and the recruiter's time, because it takes the recruiter time to actually schedule that interview. So when you landscaped in high school, that doesn't actually tell the recruiter anything about your ability to pass the technical interview. So it's not relevant to the recruiter when you're applying for software engineering positions. You're not applying to be a project manager. You're applying to be a software engineer and you're applying to make the company money through writing code for them. So that's just the cold reality. It is useful to have a few lines related to behavioral things that you've done because culture fit can be important and behavioral questions do normally stem from some experience that you had on your resume. So you want to show that you're somewhat a multi-dimensional person, but that doesn't mean a third of your resume needs to be behavioral focused points. That means three lines in the bottom of your resume need to be somewhat behavioral, leadership, volunteer-esque. And the final most common mistake that I see is having weird formats. If you look at my resume, then it's black and white, one column, lists my education at the top, work experience, projects, a little bit of leadership experience, and that's it. There's there's no colors, there's no fancy lists, there's no graphs, there's nothing of the sorts. Because in the end of the day, if you wanna really show your personality off, then that's great, but do that in the behavioral interview, do that in the phone screening, do that in your emails with the recruiter, don't do it on your resume. So when you have some super fancy resume, first of all, that's not gonna scan well into an application tracking system that's actually parsing and reading your resume and potentially filtering you out before a recruiter even sees your resume. It's also going to be more difficult for the recruiter to read so that when they give your resume 60 seconds of their attention, when they can't understand something, that's it. That's the end of the opportunity for your resume. They're not going to sit there for another minute to really make sure they understand some obnoxiously fancy resume like you might see on LinkedIn when they take a resume and make it kind of match the UI aesthetic of the website like I've seen with Amazon and Google. Google, like, yeah, those are really cool, and I'm sure that somebody appreciated them on LinkedIn, but I don't know that it actually increases your chances of getting a software engineering internship, and in the end of the day, when applying to companies should be your number one priority in terms of where your time goes, then why waste time crafting a fancy resume when you could spend that time applying to as many companies as possible? Once you shift your perspective from trying to pitch who you are at this current point in time, and towards trying to pitch yourself as a software software engineer, then I think that helps a lot. And you might wind up with a resume that has a bunch of white space on it. And the answer there is fill it up with projects. Spend a day per project. Once you have three projects or so on your resume, then you should be solid. And you know, what projects should you do? How should you go about doing these projects? All of those are valid questions. And again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because this was a video about resumes. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.